Hi guys, it's Amanda here from Fun Hands-On Learning and today I'm going to show you what we keep in our morning basket is what some people call it. We, I like to call it our warm-up basket. It's just some things that we use to warm up for our day and the reason I call it that is probably it stems from me um, previously being a classroom teacher and we would do warm-ups like before math we would do math warm-ups and before reading and phonics we would do phonics warm-ups. So I like to call it that because I feel like it gets us warmed up. If you think about when you're exercising and you're warming up for the full exercise routine, that's kind of how I perceive it. There are little things that we do each day to warm us up for our main um, lessons. And so I we tend to do these in the morning before we do our full lessons, our full hands-on lessons for the day. So um, I've been, I, I change it out based on what we're working on, but for now this is what I have and I'm gonna kinda go through it. It's pretty full right now. We don't do all of it every day by any means, but I keep it all in here. That way I can just grab this basket and have everything by me so I can kind of remember maybe what I wanna do for the day and I have some options. And so I'll just kinda grab from here in the morning and we'll do a few things. We'll spend about 25 to 30 minutes on this basket before we get on with the rest of our school day. And so that means since I'm only spending about 25, 30 minutes, I only do about a f four or five things out of the basket each day. But I have a lot of things in here. Now, um, I'm just going to get started and get right into it and show you what we have for now. And like I said, it changes. But uh, the main concept is the same, is that I always have some math things in here and I always have some phonics things in here to get us warmed up for those subjects. And I also always have a few, uh, always have my, our song books in here and that kind of thing. So let me just get into it and show you. So in the mornings we do Bible since we homeschool and we are Christians. And so I have these two uh, song books and this first one here is We Sing Bible Songs. And it just, it came with a CD that I have that has these songs on it. In fact, I downloaded the, the songs so that I have them on my phone and I can just pull them up. And then this is another one, We Sing America. And it's just uh, songs, you know, like the Star Spangled Banner, that kind of things, um, American themed songs. And so what we do is we sing some songs in the morning. Um, we do our Bible lesson and we sing a few Bible songs. And then um, every once in a while we also sing a few patriotic songs. So I have those in here just so that we have the words to the songs. Okay, uh, getting into a few math warm-ups. I have a few different things. I have a clock in here. I'll show you this. Uh, this is a Melissa and Doug clock. I have the pieces of it I have taken out because we use the pieces for lots of other activities and we don't necessarily need them for this. I just have a clock in here so that I can hold this up and we can practice telling time. Um, we don't do it every day, but I try to do it every once in a while as, as much as I can get to it. And I'll show a time and then the students have to tell me what time it is. And so we take turns doing that. And then... Along with telling time things, I have some money uh, cards in here. So I like to review time and money a lot because I feel like it's just an important skill that they always need to know. And so I have these coin clip cards. Sorry, my camera cut off. So what I was gonna say about the coin clip cards is that I can lay them out on the table in front of the kiddos and we can count the money together really quick and mark our answers or they can just tell me their answers. And so we'll go through some of the cards here and there. I can also hold up just the coins and we can, they can tell me the name of the coins. So they would say nickel, penny, dime. How much is a dime worth? 10 cents. And it's just good to review them really quick uh, at the beginning of the day, here and there, so that they are reviewing telling time and money every once in a while. I think that's an, those are important skills. Okay, so going on with math, I had these inside the basket as well. These are just some math sticks. I have attached them to these craft sticks. And you can get the uh, patterns off my website and print them out for yourself and then attach them to craft sticks. And what this is is greater than, less than, and equal to. These are our alligators. I did attach some googly eyes to them to make them a little bit more fun. 
And what we do is we use these to tell greater than, less than, equal to. Of course, the story goes that the alligators always want to eat the bigger number. And then I use these with our number cards. So let me grab those. So the number cards that I have in the basket for right now are the touch point math cards. If you don't know what touch point math is, I would um, recommend that you go watch the video that I did on touch point math. So I have different touch point math cards in here. I have the pumpkin ones and I have the apple ones because it is fall right now. Uh, and so uh, in September we were using the apple ones and now that it's October, we are going to start with the pumpkin ones. And so what I can do is I can lay out two or three digit numbers. So here's 36 and here's 25. I can lay them out on the table really quick and then I can hand the kids the, and, and they can do it one at a time. Um, and uh, they can choose, well, which one is greater or less than equal to? What will be the sign? And of course for this one, 36 is greater than 25. So they would go ahead and put the stick in just like that. So I would hand them the sticks and then they would place it in between the cards and then I would change out the cards. And you can even do three digit numbers. So if I wanted to make this 436 and 825, whatever I wanted to do, um, then they would put 436 is, oops, we can't even see that. Let me scoot you back here. 486 is less than 825. So you can just use these cards as just number cards, move them around to make different numbers and practice greater than, less than, and equal to. Another math thing that I have thrown in the basket is this. These are just some fluency number cards. And so basically um, you can see they've used some dry erase markers on it, but they say the numbers and then if they're correct, they can color in a smiley face. They say it again, smiley face and so on. Uh, so they would say 387, 408, 961, 216. So they're just practicing for fluency. So uh, there's different ones. They start off, um, Kind of easy and then they get a little bit trickier it gets into the thousands here as you can see and then there's another section here where they can orally say the value so they would say 80 700 they're saying the value of the circled number 4005 a really quick evaluation and also a practice for the kiddos to get fluent in their numbers. There's also pictures here. So then they would say the number fluently as quickly as they, or the numbers fluently as quickly as they could. So this would be 242. This is 111. So they have to count the place value blocks and say the number for some of them. And then there are also picture ones. So here's groups of grapes. And so these are grapes in groups of 10, and then they have to count. So this would be 10, 20, 3. So basically, it's just a quick place value practice to get them warmed up for math in the morning. Okay, so in our basket for right now for read alouds, actually, some of these are books that the kids are reading for, for actual um, reading practice. So this is an A Becca book. This is a grade two book for my seven year old and he is reading through this book. So we will just take one story and he will quickly read through it. And then I will go through the um, comprehension questions with him as just a quick start to our day. So he'll read a story out of there. And then um, I have these books. These are also a Becca books. These are the ones that my first grader is kind of going through. And in fact, he's um, kind of, Let's see which one, this is the last one we did right here. So they're just kind of little stories that my first grader can read to me really quick. And my, I have the other kids follow along as one of the kids is reading. So uh, we don't waste any time as far as that goes. While one is reading, another one is reading as well by following along with their eyes. So I feel like that's important. They can follow the words and then they're learning as well and they're hearing the story. So we do that. Um, so my first grader is reading those and my second grader is reading in this book. So I have those in the basket. Okay, once again, my camera let, uh, turned off on me. So 
Um, I'm not exactly sure where I was, but I think I was showing you the books that I had in the basket. So I do have a couple of Bernstein Bear books in here just for read-alouds. We love Bernstein Bears and we read Forget Their Manners just yesterday and it, it's just a super cute book. I love Bernstein Bears. If you haven't read any Bernstein Bear books, get yourself some. They're really good. Uh, so we just do those for read-alouds and then in here so that I have some nonfiction. I have a science book in here. This is by BJ, is it? BJU Press. And right now we are doing weather. And so that's what we've been reading about. And so I'll just read a little bit each day so that we have some, we're learning a little bit about some nonfiction things. So I've got science in there. I also have history in there so that we can read a little bit of history each and every day. And currently we are doing our states. And so our next thing we're going to read are states have famous people. So famous people from different states. Um, before we were talking about state leaders and that kind of thing. So we will just read a little bit each day on that. And since we were doing states, I had this little book I think I got at the dollar store about the 50 states. It's just got different facts about the states that we've been reading through. So always have some books in your morning basket or what I like to call warm up basket for reading of course because that's super important okay so another thing that i have in our basket are these these are our fluency sorry guys trying to get my camera to stay these are our uh, fluency cards from my phonics for reading curriculum you've probably seen them in other videos what i've been doing is i've been throwing them in our basket so that we can practice them each and every day now even though the kids that I'm working with right now are way past the alphabet, I still have the alphabet ones in here. And what I like to do is I like to practice the sounds each and every day. It is still good to practice your sounds even though the kids are moving on and they're reading. They still need their sounds. And so we practice it together. I use these little stars that I have here that I got at the dollar store and I just point and they will do it together actually and we'll just do quick reviews in the morning. So they will do like so. Eh, eh, s, wa, er, k, m, i, o, p, d, a. And hopefully they get it all correct. We'll do one or two pages of the alphabet ones a day and then we'll switch and do some other ones. So um, I'll pick each day. Sometimes we might do our long vowels. Sometimes we might do some, these are trigraphs, so words with uh, three, blend, three letter blends. And again, we'll go through and skr in screen, S-C-R. St, stir in streak, excuse me, S-T-R, spull in splits, S-P-L, squ in squeeze, S-Q-U, spull in splash, S-P-L, spur in spring, S-P-R. And so these are just super great warm-ups to practice our sounds and memorize. It really helps the kids to memorize the special different um, trigraphs in words. It helps them memorize, like if we were going to do the long vowels, here I'll pull up the long vowel one. You can see that my kids have used dry erase markers on them previously, because we do that too. But for example, if I was going to do this one, uh, I would go through and they would say the long vowel letters. So it would be E in team, E, A, A in pray, A, Y, O in moat, O, A, I in fries, I, E, O in tone, O consonant E, A in cave, A consonant E. So those are the patterns. So they have to not only be able to read the word, they need to be able to say the pattern of the vowels and, uh, out loud as well. So anyways, we go through those cards each and every day as well. Not all of them, but I'll pick like one or two and we'll do it as a quick warm up as well. And then um, what else do I have in here? I decided to also throw in our learn math level proficiency book in here so that if we have time, we can open it up and just do a page together. And it's it's no big deal. They just need a dry erase marker. So I have a dry erase marker in our, in our basket as well. And we'll just sit there and they can quickly uh, do it, do, 
you know, a page in the book just as a quick math review. So, for example, say the number 88, 18, 81, 86, 108, 118. Color the box with the greatest number. So they'll look at their numbers and they'll color the greatest one. I'll probably also have them say the numbers to me and then tell me why they think it's the greatest one. And then, you know, here we've got addition. So let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and two is 10. And then uh, a quick telling time activity. So we have 9.30. Each page in these fluency books have four different skills that they work on. And I, I, apologize, if, I apologize if I'm going a little quick, but I've talked about this book um, previously many, many times, so I don't want to bore you guys. But yeah, I have this thrown in there so that we can just do a page um, real quick just to kind of practice our, our different skills. I did also throw in uh, this little activity. So you guys know that we have lots and lots of hands-on activities that we do, and I plan out different hands-on activities for the different kids based on the skills that each child is working on. And I just thought, since we do the basket together collectively, I thought I would just throw this activity in there. And by the way, this basket mostly I do collectively with my um, four, five, uh, five year old, seven year old, six, no, he's six. <laughs> my five year old, my six year old, and my seven year old. That is who I do this, these activities with for the most part. So I don't, I, I don't do these with my older ones and I don't do these with my younger ones, the kind of the kids that are in the middle. <laughs> That's the age range that I'm doing this basket with. All right, so um, I threw these in there because it is fall and I like to just sometimes throw in a little seasonal activity and we decided to do these together. You can get these off my website. This is a fall patterning activity that I made a couple of years ago. And it was fun, the other day we did it, what I did is I just had them do it together instead of individually. And we put the cards in the middle of the table, these are the cards, and then I gave each of them a pattern um, strip like this, and they would grab from the cards that I had in the middle of the table and finish their pattern. So this one is Scarecrow, Scare, Scarecrow, Leaf, Scarecrow, and the finishing it would be Scarecrow. So they had to find the card and place it in the pattern. And so each of the kids had one, and then, um, you know, some of them were able to do it super easy and didn't even have to really think, the, the older kiddos. And then my younger one had to have a little bit more help. So this is Pumpkin, Leaf, Pumpkin, Leaf, and then obviously Pumpkin. So yeah, these are really cute. I'll leave a link below where you can get these. I have lots of, uh, hands-on activities for the different seasons and I'll definitely link the fall ones below in case you're interested in getting those. Most of these are on the kindergarten first grade level as far as the skill range of them uh, but they can be used with older kids as well as preschoolers even. Uh, some of them are easy enough for preschoolers and some of them are hard enough that they would still even challenge maybe a second grader. So uh, I'll leave a link below to those. So that is pretty much it for our basket. I do uh, tend to, I have some pens left in there. I do tend to change it out every once in a while, but some of the things that do always stay the same is I do always, uh, actually um, ever since I started doing the basket have been keeping the fluency cards in the basket because I really like doing these every single day. So the fluency, the phonics fluency, I do every day. And then the same with the math. I really like doing the telling time and the number fluency every day. Another thing that we can do, oh, I forgot to tell you, is with the cards that the touch point cards that I have in there we can do addition and subtraction so we can really quick practice that and we do enjoy practicing addition and subtraction uh, every day and pretty soon I'm going to be starting with the multiplication with my second grader as well so just to get them really quick and fluent with their math facts and by the way I'm working on uh, some fluency pages, just like these phonics pages that we do. I'm working on fluency pages for math facts because I can't wait to do those with my kiddos. Uh, but I don't have them on the website yet, but uh, that's something to look forward to once I get around <laughs> to getting those 
uh, started or, or, or completed enough to put them on the website. Uh, I will be back in a video to talk about that. But for the meantime, uh, what we, we can do is I can put two cards out and they can add. So uh, I would put two cards out and they would say 10. 8 and 2 is 10, you know, 5 and 4, 9, and so on. So we can use these cards for addition and also subtraction. So I can put two cards out and they can say six, 3 if I tell them subtract, you know. So I'll put the two cards out say subtract and they would say 3. You know, put the two cards out and say add 9. So, yeah, we can use our touch point math cards really quick to just practice some math facts as well. All right, guys, that is what's in our basket, and I hope this was interesting and helpful for you. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye.